Hello and welcome. I'm glad you're here. I hope that this video gives you some information that you can use to make the best decision for yourself on whether you use Kindle, Kindle software, or iBooks for studying and research. Whether you're using a Kindle device, Kindle software, an iPad Pro, an iPad Air. We all know that reading for learning is a huge part of any academic activity. Books and journals contain a lot of information in a very condensed format and reflect a major aspect of how we communicate information. Every student, instructor, academic, researcher, and anybody seeking information will use books and journals at some level in their research. The world of digital books and journals has made finding, searching, and working with these resources even more efficient and powerful. Here on the channel, I have several videos on how we can digitize paper resources into digital formats to unlock the power of working with these resources. A question that I hear though is, what device is best for digital reading? While it might seem like a simple question, there are some major factors to consider, not the least of which is what type of reading are you planning to do? Are you reading novels on your commute to work? And hopefully you're not driving while you're reading, but are you reading graphic novels that have a lot of detailed artwork and color? I'll be looking at those scenarios in some other videos that I'll have here on the channel, but for this video, we're gonna look at a specific area of reading, academic research reading reading where we need to collect portions of what we're reading into an organized system for study, or reading where we have PDF documents and we need to annotate, highlight, and share information from them. Reading where we're not just reading the text, but we might be working with graphs and images and charts and other elements of the work that we're learning and researching from. For this comparison, I'm not going to look at a couple of factors that are important in some of the other types of reading scenarios. For example, I'm not going to look at price comparisons, and I'm not going to speak about battery life. Well, these are legitimate factors that can affect a decision for other types of reading, the primary concern here is functionality and the purpose of academic research and using the tool for academic study. Let's first look at using a Kindle device and the Kindle software, which is available across a wide variety of devices. There's a lot that we can do with a Kindle device. The Kindle device allows me to go in and read a lot of books. So let's say, for example, I have this book on UDL and I want to do some reading here and take some notes. So I'm going to go in here and let's just say I'll just grab this here, this section here. It doesn't really matter what I'm grabbing here, but you can see that I can highlight no problem at all. I can undo what I've done. I can actually go in and take a little note on here, and with the new Kindle Scribe, you can actually use handwriting here, but I'm just gonna do some simple things in here. So we'll save this little note that I put in there, so that now has a note. If I wanna get back to it, I'll click on there. I can share it out, but notice that with sharing, I can only share it out to either an email or to Goodreads. Those are my limitations for sharing. And if I go in, you'll notice that I don't really have a lot of options beyond that. I can do searches in there. There's not too much here. I can either do a Wikipedia. You can do a translation, which is quite, quite cool. But that's about it when it comes to the Kindle device. I don't have a lot of other options around sharing. I don't have a lot of other options around any type of copying and pasting. There's not a lot that I can do beyond what I've just done here. If I use Kindle software instead of a Kindle device, I will get some more features. So first of all, let's open up a book. So I'll open up Make It Stick here, The Science of Successful Learning. And I'll go ahead and you can see I've actually taken a highlight here already. So if I tap on the highlight, I can clear that off. I can go in and I can select different pages and such. But I'm just going to go in and select this area here and highlight it again. Once I've highlighted it, if I click on the highlight, I have some options in here. I can change the color of the highlight, so that's that's useful to do. I can do things like copy that particular passage that I have, and then if I open up a different application, such as Microsoft OneNote, and I'll just have to use my Face ID here, and when I have Microsoft OneNote opened, I can add a page, and then because I've got this uh, in my clipboard, so to speak, if I click on where I want to paste it, I can paste, and you can see that I've pasted directly from the Kindle application into OneNote. But notice it didn't give me a citation of where that came from. That's going to be important later on when we look at iBooks. Going back to Kindle, we'll just go back to the highlight that I just took. I can also go in and I can take a note here as well. So I can, in this case, I'm using an iPad with a stylus, so I can actually use handwriting and it'll actually 
convert that to text if I don't go at too much of an angle here. And I can save that as a note. I can also go in and you'll see that I have the little icon here that indicates there's a note. I can also share it. Now when I go to share it, I can either have an image quote or a text quote. And then when I go to share, notice that I have all of these different locations that I can share this note to. This is a quote from the book. So I can airdrop it, I can do all sorts of interesting things. And notice that one of my options here is to send it directly to OneNote. And I can put in, there's a lot of different options depending on which applications I have installed. So I'm gonna once again go to OneNote. I'm gonna share it with the app. And notice this time, it actually takes the citation of where it came from. So I'm gonna put that into my reading section here. I'm gonna go in and I'm gonna go make it stick. So make it stick. So whatever I want to call this page, this is more of a OneNote thing, and I'll send it there. But what's interesting here is that if I now go into OneNote, I will now have this make it stick. And this time, I'll actually have the location of where I got that quote from. So that's quite useful. Going once again back into the Kindle software here. Now other things that I can do with the Kindle software here is I can do a search and I can report an error. But that's really, that's it. That's where I'm, I'm gonna be with the Kindle software. If I go back to my library, and this will be important again when we compare this to iBooks, if I open up a PDF, so the PDF, is, I have a PDF for a, a course that I'm taking, and if I go in here and I say I wanna highlight this, what, what's going on? Right? So I click on here, I can't highlight this. And I don't have any option to copy this. And I have no option to, to really do anything with this PDF. So I've got my pencil here, but you know I'm trying to go in, I can zoom in, but that doesn't really help me. So with the PDF, I don't really have a lot of options in terms of highlighting, capturing or sharing. And this makes a big difference in the world of academia where I do get a lot of documents that, that are PDF documents and we're, we're gonna see why this is problematic, especially when we compare it to iBooks later on. Now, let's look at iBooks, which is an exclusively Apple product. We only have the option of using iBooks on an iPad, whether it's an iPad Air, an iPad Pro, or all the iPads, but I do like the ones with the stylus. We can also use it on our iPhone. That's not really a good choice. Maybe if I'm just doing a quick little read of something. And we can use it on our computers as long as they're Apple computers. When I look at iBooks, let's go back to my library here. So you can see I have a library of different books that I'm reading. So let's grab this book, How People Learn. Let's say I wanna take a note here. Same thing as we would do with the Kindle or the Kindle um, application. Notice here when I highlighted though, it underlined. And that's because with the iBooks, I have the option of changing the color of the highlight so I can use the different colors of the highlight, but I also have the option of just doing an underlying highlight. And that's quite a useful feature because I find it's a lot time, a lot of times it's easier to read and I actually prefer to underline as opposed to highlight. I can also go in and I can, you know, I can take off my highlight. I can also make a note here. So because I'm using a stylus, I can go in and make a note here. I'll just do hello, it converts to text. Uh, so now I have a note on there as well. You see the notes on the side here. If again, if I select it, I can share it and I get a few options for sharing, but I certainly don't get as many options as I had with the Kindle. So here with iBooks, I have to go in and use the copy function. And then when I do the copy, let's I'll just use it here and we'll just paste it into here, go into text mode, and I'll just paste it onto the same page. I would have it, uh, normally it would have its own page, but the difference with the copy and paste here is that it gives me the, the source here I don't have to worry with copy and paste with the Kindle application. It doesn't give me source, I have to use the share. And with the iBooks, I don't get the share as many options, but I get the copy and paste retains the lineage of the data, of the, of the quotation, of the what I'm researching on. There are some other options I have here. You can copy, highlight, you can do translations, you can share. So you might wonder, okay, you get the underlining, but there's so many more sharing options with the Kindle software. Well, here's where iBooks makes a really big difference. This is a PDF. This happens to be a PDF of the history of comic books. And you can see here a couple of things. One, we get color. 
So that's going to make a fairly big difference if I have a lot of diagrams or, or anything that has charts or anything that's in color. But the big difference here is that with a PDF, when I tap on it, I can do all you know standard things. I can do things like share it out. So here, if I go to share the PDF, I don't get a lot of options. But what I can do is I can annotate the PDF. So now I can go in and I get a lot of annotation options. I have a lot of ability to go in, annotate this PDF, do all sorts of interesting things. There's even some really useful things like, for example, if I have something here, this is appropriate to a comic book thing, I could go in here and I have these little, you know, word bubbles where I could go in and I could say, okay, I have this word bubble in here and I could say, you know, Wow, I mean, that's not great. It'd be better if it was a diagram or something. But the idea behind this is that I can actually work with the PDF in terms of annotating, marking it up, doing all sorts of interesting things. You can also take your annotations off, obviously, so you can erase it all. You'll notice that with the word bubble, you don't just erase it, you have to actually tap on it and then you can delete it. But you get a lot more options when it comes to PDFs if you're using iBooks. So although I can't do the direct sharing like I can with the Kindle app, I can't do it with the Kindle device, don't get very many options for sharing. Kindle app gives me more options for sharing. I can push it out to other applications that I may have. The fact that I can come in here and that I can go in and I can use the annotation on a PDF makes a really big difference for doing any type of research because a lot of the things I do get will be PDFs and iBooks allows for annotation of PDFs. As you've seen, I have a preference for iBooks. My Kindle library far exceeds that of my iBook library. I have many, many more books on my Kindle devices and in my Kindle library, but I've made the decision to slowly start buying any textbooks and any PDFs that I'm gonna work with. I'm gonna put all of that onto my Apple device and use iBooks for that. I'll continue to use my Kindle for books where I don't need as much of the academic functionality that I talked about in this video. The portability, focused reading, and battery life of the Kindle makes it ideal for reading novels, short stories, or any reading material where I just want to grab maybe a quick note or a quick quote off of it, but I don't really plan to do a lot of research with it, and I'm not going to put that into my expanded learning system. For all my reading that I intend to learn from and interact with, I'll be using iBooks. The ability to annotate with the Apple Pencil, uh, PDF markups, and maintaining a link to the source material are all critical features in academic learning workflows. Speaking of learning workflows, if you're a Skillshare member, I have a course on productive learning with technology where I go through a three-part process on learning with technology. Check it out if you're a member. I'll leave a link below. If you're not a member, I think they'll give you a free trial period to access their library of resources and such, and they are not sponsoring this video. I just needed a place to put that course because it doesn't really fit here on YouTube. It's a little bit of a, it's like a 42 minute course. Anyways, if you're interested, go check it out on Skillshare. I'll link below. Thank Thank you so much for watching. Like, subscribe, and do all those YouTube things if you want more videos on learning and technology. See you in the next video.